it's growing. I see such a great crowd. It's what a, what a good looking crowd of, of people here today with interest in the court. And I want to officially welcome you to the Port of Wainimi. Um, you know, the Port of Opportunity, the Port of Wainimi has always been a Port of Opportunity, and I think more now than ever, because of our growth patterns, that it has become even greater for the opportunity for the community and for businesses alike. You know, the strength of our port is with our customers and with our communities. We can't go anywhere without your support and without your, your input as we're doing here today. We're talking about a strategic plan, and of course a strategic plan is where do we want to go and how do we want to get there and what's the best way to do it. What do we want to implement, what do we want to eliminate, and what do we want to emphasize in that growth period. This is a part of our visioning process that we're going to be involved in today, and it's uh, so great to see so many of you that are interested in doing that with us, because this really will chart our future for the Port of Wainimi. Just looking out here, uh, I just can't believe the interest. I, it, I'm just really impressed by all of you being here today. I know there's a lot of great ideas out there, and we're going to make the Port of Wainimi a better place uh, to, to work and a better place for business. You know, when this port was started by uh, Richard Bart so many years ago, uh, he had a vision. He had a vision that this port would become really important to the community, not just for businesses, but for working people alike. And I think that's been our responsibility to keep that vision alive, to keep Richard Bart's vision alive for the community, to create those jobs, and to also foster business here for the community. And I think we've been doing a good job of that. And with all of your partnerships, I think we're going to continue to do an even better job in the future. So, we're really here today to listen to you, not to listen to me talk so much. But I'd also like to recognize some people that are here today that are elected officials and are part of our community and very important part of our community. But first of all, let me uh, recognize my fellow commissioners. We have Secretary Arlene Frazier, who's here. Commissioner Mary Ann Rooney. We have uh, Lauren Bianchi. Clement. We have Bill Gallagher representing uh, John Zaragoza. Brad Hudson with Julia Brownlee. And then from our partner in the city, Port of Wainimi, we have Cynthia Haas, who's here, Daniel. We have Tom Fibb, Honorable Tom Fibb, City Council Member. Hey. The Honorable Jim Hensley. The Honorable Doug DeVries. Former City Councilman Jim Daniels. And uh, last but not least, we have Greg Nyhoff from the city of Oxnard. And I'm just, uh, I just want to say that I'm really pleased to have both cities represented here today. Uh, it, it's an interesting thing that we are the Oxnard Harbor District, but actually named after the city in which we originated the port, Wainimi. But now we are the port of Wainimi. So it's great to see uh, the cities represented here today. I think it's indicative of how important our, our relationships are and our friendships are with these cities and how important uh, our futures are tied together. So thank you all for being here. I wish you a lot of uh, luck in your deliberations here, and we hope to accomplish everything that you envision today. So and I'll introduce our executive director. Commissioner Herrera noted the importance of community is key to successful strategic planning. And with our partners here today, we'd like to give them the opportunity to stand up and, and make some remarks about the partnership that the port has with our city communities. So I'd like to invite um, city councilor uh, member uh, Tom Fitt. Oh. Yes. 
You want me to talk from here? Or? No, what the hell? Can you hear me? Get up. We can't see it. Don't be bad. Honorable Tom. Yeah, I'm so bad. You can't get out of the body. I'm so shy. <laughs> I have 15 minutes. Is that what you're doing? 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 Is uh, I'm an urban planner and I've worked for a lot of cities and I can tell you visionary processes, strategic planning in a lot of communities is nothing more than a feel-good exercise, it's a relations kind of uh, effort. Uh, but the City of Wainimi and the Harbor District have a proud history of translating plans and strategic planning into action. I go back to the uh, 60s, uh, the city's first redevelopment project in collaboration with the Harbor District. Uh, we doubled the land area and the water area of the Harbor District as a joint endeavor. That was an ambitious planning effort. And then we fast forward about 20 years later into the 80s and uh, both the Harbor District and the city uh, were tasked uh, through the California Coastal Act to prepare their own master plans for their respective jurisdictions. And, Collaboratively, that translated to ultimately uh, further expansion of the Harbor District with the acquisition of Wharf 2 and the adjacent backlands, amounting to about 25 acres uh, for the Navy base. So it had greatly expanded the throughput capacity of the harbor. And then ultimately into the 90s, uh, again, a collaboration between the Harbor District, the city, and the U.S. Navy, uh, the first uh, Navy property in, uh, on the West Coast. Uh, that was disposed of through the uh, Base uh, Realignment and Closure Act, BRAC, uh, the former Naval Civil Engineering Laboratory, which is on the south side of the harbor, uh, was a, again a collaborative effort that translated to about 33 acres of land that was added to the inventory of the harbor, and it, it allowed them to embark into a container cargo operation. So. What I'm trying to impart on you, you're not here just to have hors d'oeuvres. Uh, this is real. And, and what you do and what you contribute will ultimately translate to action because that's the relationship the city and the harbor have historically had. So please speak your minds, participate, and remember what you say could ultimately come to be. So uh, this is not just an exercise in uh, friendliness. This is real, you know, roll up your sleeves and get it out. So. Thank you again on behalf of the city for inviting us to this. Thank you. Thank you, Council Member um, I'd like to also now bring to Mike Rufo and the uh, city manager, Rod Oxnard's uh, Greg uh, Nyhoff, and talk over the remarks of the city. Thank you. <laughs> well, good afternoon. It's uh, good to be here. I do not have the history story that you just heard because I've been here about seven months. <laughs> but I will tell you that as I looked at coming to Oxnard to be the city manager and was looking through some of the chamber information, there was this excellent um, information packet about the port. And I had no idea when I looked at Oxnard that we had this asset in our community. And so for me, and on behalf of the city council and mayor, and Kimberly Horner, she's doing my economic development for me this year. We are also privileged to be a part of this and look forward to ways that we can partner with the port to obviously bring jobs to the community, to bring better business, more business to the port, and also enhance what we already have. So I will tell you from my perspective, looking at the future of this opportunity, there's only upsides to our partnership and to really um, promoting this port to accelerate business development within our community. So, Really excited to be here, be partners. And for Kristen and the board and the commissioners, I will say they've been fantastic reaching out. I've already had three or four meetings toward the port already to see how we might be better partners. We're going to be really looking at our strategic plan, our partners. We just met yesterday to start talking about how do we marry the city of Oxnard's strategies for economic development, business development, growth development with what the port's doing. How do we get a benefit on both sides from that? So this is great that it's happening right now, right along with ours, and we're excited to be here. So thank you for the invite as well. I, I always steal this from Will Bird, who's our director of public relations and marketing. But if you throw a bunch of 
sand up in the air, it just falls. If you put the sand in a sock, you have a serious weapon. And I think that as a united stakeholder body here in industry and in community partners, we can do big things together. So it's just great to see so many folks in the room ready to kick off this strategy session with us. I'd like to introduce my team, if I could. Uh, who's in the room? Raise your hands. We've got Andrew Palmeris, who's our, our chief uh, finance officer. John Demers over here is our chief operating officer. Um, newly on board is Donna Lakai, our business development director. Uh, Austin Yang is with us, he's a, a, our accountant and <coughs> controller here with the port. I would also would be remiss if I didn't uh, acknowledge our former commissioner, Jesse Ramirez, in the room. And uh, Will Burke is floating around something again, and they said our director is Mark. Oh, there he is. Okay, so these folks are all going to be floating the room as we do the strategic uh, planning session. We're really going to get out as a uh, as council member, uh, Mr. Fink said, we're going to roll up our sleeves, we're going to have washboard session, really, really solicit your input into our strategic planning process. So with that, we actually have a professional team here that's been working with us to build a strategic plan, and they're going to kind of lay out the ground rules for, for the meeting and, and get things going. So I'm going to introduce now Ken Parkinson and Dave to get things going. Good evening, everyone. Um, a couple... If uh, those back in the doorway, there, there's some seats over here. If you guys, it's going to be sort of an hour or so session. Um, a couple more seats up front here. Um, and eventually, we're going to ask you to sort of associate with the table. But we'll, we'll go through that after Kristen's overview. Um, we'd like to just sort of kick off the session with sort of a, a, a straw vote. And um, if everyone looks into their materials they picked up, you're going to see um, a, a list that has 11 items on and they're representative of what's hanging here off of the podium. And what we're going to do is we're just going to do a simple vote, show of hands, and coming into the room tonight with no preconceived con you know, notion of, of what tonight's about, um, what's your area of focus relative to what you think the, the court um, has to basically take up as, as priority business? So I'm just going to go down, Brian over here with my team from ACOM, uh, Craig Holland back here, Lou, Lou as well, Demeglio, um, are going to be eventually working with Adana and we're going to work the tables over here after Kristen's presentation. But we're going to go down the list real quick, trade development, show of hands as the most important item. Put your hand up. Yeah, raise my hand. Can you do more than one? Yeah, just one go. <laughs> good, good catch out there. Okay. <laughs> it's going to be odd too, right? Absolutely. <laughs> All right, next one security. You vote more than once. That's what I asked. Okay, marine terminal operations. Hands high. Job creation. That's everybody. Uh, green port <coughs> influences. Infrastructure development. Uh -oh. <laughs> Fiscal responsibilities. <laughs> Energy initiatives. Community engagement. Way 
to go, Elizabeth. <laughs> okay. Navy Port Coordination Cooperation. Shouldn't that be City Port Navy Cooperation? <laughs> I'm just suggesting. Uh, why not? Why, why not? not? Why not? <laughs> why not? Okay, City. Okay, well then, I changed my vote. <laughs> I think there's another one on there, and it may only relate to one or two, but non-core commercial use of Harbor District property. Okay. <laughs> and that was actually, you're, 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 you're right on target. That the, the one here in the middle is, let, let's just go over how we got to these initial 11, was we've been running through with uh, Donna's leadership and Kristen's leadership a series of interviews, which we um, basically have been... Um, with, you know, the, the operators, the users, um, officials from the governments, uh, regional transportation authorities, and, and all, to be inclusive. And, and this sort of was some common themes that began to develop. But as the night goes on, as, as you just brought up, the middle one here is wide open for discussion, which is, you know, what's on your mind personally <coughs> you want to hear about the night part of the process. So with that, we're going to tally this up, and we're going to come back after Kristen runs through an overview of the board. Mm. Okay. So to, to kick things off, we've got a highlight of uh, where the port is today, and then I think that builds a foundation for where we're going and working with all of you. So. Um, what I think a lot of folks don't realize about Fort Wayne because we're often in the, <coughs> in the backyard of the big complex, right, Los Angeles and LA, is what our impact is really nationally. If you look at us through a national lens, we actually rank in the top 11% of all of the nation's ports. So we really are a medium-sized port in terms of what's happening in terms of the whole big picture of ports in our country. And I think a lot of people don't recognize that. We really are a key player and we really are an economic engine. So we really want to make sure the community is aware of that gem they have in their county that they can, they can capitalize on for us. Um, um, <laughs> that's just a little uh, atmosphere music. music. <laughs> <laughs> um, we recently took a look at our mission statement, our vision statement, and go down. I think two of the things that we really like to highlight that some folks might not realize is that the port is a self-supporting entity, meaning we can access grants and we can get public funding, but for the most part, we're run much like a corporation or a private enterprise. The operations through the port are what bring the revenues that allow us to operate. In terms of our overall mission statement, we are not in the business of getting rich as a port. What we're in the business to do is to enrich our communities by bringing jobs and prosperity. Very simple mission, very successful of what we're here to do. Um, port governance and, and leadership, this is a picture of the five elected commissioners. For the, most in the room probably know this, and I, I think Commissioner President Herrera uh, uh, noted it, but we're actually governed by a geopolitically boundary called the Oxnard Harbor District. And to be elected as a board of commissioners, you need to live inside that, that jurisdiction to get elected at large. And so we have five elected commissioners that are the governing body for the port. And then in terms of our overall governance, we're actually part of the state of California. We're a special district, thereby regulated what's called the Harbor and Navigations Code. So that's our governance structure. We are a public agency. We have to comply with the Browns Act and all those sorts of public laws and rules and regulations. But the nature of our business is that the buck stops here with our commissioners. And it's a great format for running a port because it allows us to have expedited business deals and those sorts of things. We can get in a room, educate our board, and we can get business done. So it's a, it's a really good model, I think, for port governing and being able to execute and grow and, and succeed in, in a port environment and also 
the, the nature of it is that these folks are represented by you. So they're representing you, the constituents of the community. So it really allows you to bring your ideas to the table in, in a different fashion than the way most courts operate. So just a couple of highlights about the port itself. This is a picture of our sea trade routes and how we've access to the global marketplace. We're very competitively located on the, on the West Coast. We're only deep water port between Los Angeles and San Francisco, giving us a very competitive advantage in terms of the niche markets that we attract here at the Port of Winnie. Overall infrastructure, this is the layout of the different terminals that we have here. We are a niche port. We primarily handle automobiles, perishable commodities, fertilizer, liquid bulk, and what we call project cargo. And we have these terminals and assets here to do it a little difficult to see, but we have the largest cold storage for perishable commodities on the West Coast. Not the largest warehousing capacity, but cold storage, yes. We also have facilities to support our railroad customers and really have uh, maximized our infrastructure to handle a lot with limited infrastructure. And it's a testament to the coordination and the work of our operations officer, our, our coordination with the Navy base. We have a joint use agreement where we're able to use wharfs on the Navy side for commercial purposes. So we're being able to juggle a lot of uh, cargo through our port today with the limited assets that we have. Um, important to any operation with a port is the logistics supporting it. Um, we have a lot of our customers here in the room that, that uh, run these types of operations, channel on logistics supports the containerized freight of um, Chiquita and Del Monte. We have uh, BMW off port, we have gaps over on the Navy base side, WWL, all major business players that have made investments in our community to bring business here and jobs because we're on the front line of the supply chain. Um, folks know we own a railroad? We are the owner of the Ventura County Railway. Uh, we have a, a contract with GNW, which is a short haul operator that connects our 12 miles of track with a major railroad player, Class 1 Railroad in Union Pacific, that connects us from there to the uh, international or to the global marketplace in, in the Northern Hemisphere with Canada, Mexico, and, and the rest of the United States. So it's, it gives us a very competitive advantage as a port to have that rail infrastructure. Also, in terms of freight quarters, we have a primary freight quarter that runs out here along Port Winning Road, connects with Rice Ave, and then puts us out on the 101. And then the contingency quarter is, is the Victoria. And clearly, as we're sitting here talking about intermodal infrastructure and roadways and impacts in the community, we're here to learn about what you think about these intermodal quarters and how they support trade and our access to uh, the transport, transportation infrastructure that's so vital to our competitiveness. Efficient cargo hub, well, we've come up with a slogan here, we make cargo move. And we say that because we really do. As I noted earlier, we're a small port that does big things. We're a niche port. We really are effective at moving cargo. We don't have the congestion that we're faced up with some of the bigger ports on the water side, on the land side. We're really able to efficiently move cargo through our port. Um, I'm not just tooting the horn of, of, our, of our local ILWU. We really do have skilled labor here because they move the same types of cargoes every single day. They're very, very good at it. So our throughput is high for the type of niche commodities that we have. So these are all really good selling points that we have to showcase the port when we're looking to bring new trade. Cargo performance, this here is a list, and we can get you guys access to all of these uh, PowerPoint slides, but it's a list of all the different types of shippers and carriers that call on our call Port of Winnie home and do business with us here. Our customers, of course, all around the room. Raise your hands. Where are you? I saw some of you floating around. I saw Don over there. We, we go with the slogan, our customers make us thrive, because we are a landlord port, and it really, our customers are the drivers. They're the ones going out bringing the business here, and certainly key to our success as a port community. Just a breakdown of the port, uh, cargo portfolio. We handle what we call general cargo, project cargo. Just by way of example, we moved the largest crane in the world that was demobilized in Arizona. It was trucked out here, and then we shipped it to Korea. So we handle a lot of these unique types of cargos. In fact, a lot of project cargo comes through our port to support operations up in Los Angeles because of the efficiency of moving goods through our port. So a lot of interesting scenarios there. Uh, Liquid Bolt is our fertilizer business. We bring fertilizer in from Poland, Norway, and Russia. Fresh fruits, our banana um, trade, and just kind of to put it in a 
anecdotally there for you. We knew, uh, we move enough bananas through our core that if you line them all up, it's enough to go around the globe 12 and a half times. So that's a lot of bananas, about 650,000 tons of fruit. And if you think about it, the only way to really eat a banana in this country is to import it. There's some isolated cases outside of that, but for the most part, you know, our country <laughs> depends on import business of bananas, and we're very important to that supply chain here in Fort Wayne. Um, and then automobiles, very, very important to our portfolio and trade um, commodities. In fact, if you kind of flip this chart around and you look at it in terms of revenues, uh, the, uh, the auto business is the biggest driver in terms of the revenue of the port. Historical cargo throughput here, you can see that in 2006 we were hammered in the recession. It was really the auto trade fell sharply. We saw about 180,000 cars coming through our port that year when traditionally we handled close to 300,000 automobiles. So we did see some implications there, but we're pleased to report that we continue to see tick ups in trade and, and a nice recovery from the 2006 period. Or 2009 period, excuse me. Um, last year, we were pleased that we. Uh, Again, tipped the scale and had our best ocean freight year in history. It was up 198 tons. In terms of cargo, it's not a lot, but it still gives us bragging rights that we had another benchmark year. So we're very pleased to, uh, to say things continue to move in a nice trajectory. Um, and then for this year, things are continuing to look good. This is a first quarter performance. We're up about 3%, and we're very optimistic that second quarter was equally as strong. So good year for trade all over all so far again. Um, just looking at our ports performance by uh, commodity here, row row. Everybody know what row is? Row row is is the kind of thing word for folks. Roll on, roll off. It's cargo that simply rolls off the ship. So in, in that business, our uh, automobiles and high and heavy. Again, you can see how hard hit it was in 2009 in the recession, and how nicely now it is recovering. Auto imports, exports. Well, we are a heavy importer right now, but. Really interesting what you're seeing in automobile industries. A lot more of our major manufacturers that were once importers are now becoming exporters of product of, of cars. In fact, Honda moved its a million car manufactured in Ohio through our port to Korea. So there's an interesting dynamic going on in the automobile business, and certainly an area where we would like to be more participatory in, in realizing those market opportunities with export of automobiles, and in fact, last year we were up 30% on the auto export trade. The port that farmers built, we're very proud of that. We had a lot of growers back in our backyard, in Mission, in there, among others, and really want to see how we can take advantage of, the, of the, our relationships and, and the, the natural uh, fact that they're here growing, and how do we capitalize on the opportunity to export more of the commodities that are grown in our backyards. So there's certain things that we can look at and, and talk about today. But you can see here, again, that the performance of our fruit trade is really inelastic to the economy. It's pretty steady. If you have a banana during a recession, you're likely going to have it during good times. It doesn't really get impacted by the trends in the economy. So it's a very stable, strong business for us here. Fertilizer. They've seen some nice tick ups in trade. One of the interesting products that they're bringing in is um, it's, it's, a, it's a product that emulsifies in diesel fuel and it reduces emissions, and they use it in tractor equipment. So it's been a new commodity that's come online, and I think that uh, explains a lot of why they're seeing an increase in their throughput. Domestic cargo. Some folks might not realize this, but we do handle a lot of squid here at the port. Some say as high as 40% of the, the state squid comes through the port of Guanimi, and that's associated with a lot of jobs. The processing in Oxnard and, and other areas produces as high as uh, 1,400 jobs. So it's, a, it's an important uh, industry, maybe not for us in terms of revenue directly at the port, but in terms of the economic impact of the British community, it is very, very significant and important. And then we also support the uh, oil rigs that run up the coast up through uh, Santa Barbara. We have a, a a huge industry base that supports those uh, those platforms and important again from an economic perspective and job creation. Um, so every year with our commissioners, we, we have a visioning session. We pull, we bring in our five elected leaders to come and say, what are the priorities for the year? What did we do right last year? And where are we going next year? And so we've rolled out in these various visioning workshops these core priorities of economic vitality, marketing, environment, innovation and technology, and strategic partnerships. And so I'm just going to quickly highlight what we've accomplished in, in, in each of these arenas. 
In terms of a vital economic engine, I think it's important for all you folks to understand the impacts that we bring from an economic perspective. We create 3,000 direct jobs out of the port. So really important. And this chart may be hard to see, but it's a breakout of where those jobs are in each community in, in our county. And I certainly can give you that uh, access to that. <coughs> um, in terms of taxes, we bring 20.9 million in local taxes. Again, this chart breaks it out by where it goes in the county, and be happy to get you that back. Strategic planning. Um, that's why we're here today. So what we're doing is we're taking a snapshot of where a lot of what we're working on is part of this leadership initiative in terms of business development. How do we prepare for the future? We've done some baseline market analysis, very targeted analysis to understand what growth areas are. And then how do we make investments here locally to capitalize in those um, opportunities so that they're sustainable, viable, and good for, for our community in terms of both uh, jobs, mitigation, and opportunities, and all those sorts of things. Um, some of the capital projects that are in queue right now, we are looking to deepen our harbor, big uh, community benefits there, that we hope the sand is clean and we'll be able to pull it out and bring it around the corner. Um, we've also implemented recently our shoreside counters. Anyone that had the opportunity to go out and see it, but our ships are now plugging in a berth, so they're not admitting uh, uh, diesel emissions while they're, while they're um, shored up at the docks. So some really good infrastructure projects that we've accomplished to date, and again, looking forward to doing more of that to bring new business and also do our, our, our part to be stored to the environment. Um, marketing, uh, another uh, leadership priority. So we've done a lot there. I don't know if everyone's seen our new logo. We've kind of reshaped our identity. It's really trying to get people to buy into the Newport brand. And then most importantly, it's, the, it's access to the communication tools. It's the Facebook, it's the Twitter, it's the social media, it's the marketing kits, but it's a way for us to communicate with all of you about what we're doing. And so we're rolling out a new newsletter that we're going to run quarterly, um, those sorts of things. So it's really taking advantage of the 21st century tools out in the virtual world so we can best not only showcase the port for business opportunity, but best communicate with our community partners. So please tweet us, follow us, tweet us. You know, don't type hashtag reefer. We learned the hard way. <laughs> 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 Environment, a very, very uh, important part of our leadership agenda. We have rolled out an environmental framework, four areas of air quality, soil and sediments, energy management, climate change, marine water resources, and, and water quality. We have strategic action plans in all these four areas. So again, we really do want to do our part to restore the environment and make sure our operations are clean and, and, and minimize their impacts. Here's some pictures of our shoreside power. Don't get the, quite the best photograph there, but it's really just taking a huge plug and plugging it into a huge outlet. It's, it's really quite that simple at the end of the day, but quite an expensive investment um, uh, to make it all happen. And I just highlight some of the emission reductions. You'll see over the life of the project, we bring down particulate matter 92%, uh, tons of NOx 98%, and then the uh, global, uh, greenhouse gases by about 50%. I just highlight this year, you know, we, with the partnership, I see Lane Krieger in the room and Cynthia, we're all thrilled to see the dredge efforts move forward and the erosion project happen. This is the impact that it has with the port. I don't know if everybody realizes it, but our revetment wall, the mountain of our port, was not designed to handle wave action. So these dredge initiatives and projects are really important to the stability of the infrastructure of the port. And you can see here now that we see sand on the other side of our revetment wall. Just a month ago, it was all water and waves and putting cars in certain areas of the port. So I just, again, looking at community partnership and getting good projects moving forward, this is certainly a win for all of us. And I thank the good work of Lynn and in making that all happen. Innovation and technology, uh, again, a leadership prop, uh, priority. And something that's been sort of a fun, little out-of-the-box uh, project that we're working on. We have rolled out something called MAS. It's our Maritime Advanced System Technology Laboratory, where we've really opened up the doors to be an incubator for the entrepreneurs in our community to test new technologies. So if you know anyone that's looking to test a technology, please send them our way. And I, I can give an example. We had a gentleman that was making paint out of recycled tires, and they wanted to see how it stood up in a maritime environment. And it didn't prove out that it worked all that well, but at least they had the opportunity to test the solution and see if it can emerge as a, as, as a technology for commercialization. It also can be more sophisticated in working with our partners in the Coast Guard and with the Navy. We recently did an exercise 
where we stood some surveillance technology called microwave technology out on one of the oil platforms. And then it would feed back uh, through these waves of surveillance to the port and to the base. And we could see how it stood up in a, a terrorist threat environment. There was an attack on one of the oil platforms and they went out. And it too proved to be a very, very sophisticated and strong technology. And it's still out there today. So we get these win-wins when we invest in these types of uh, incubator settings to test new technologies, whether they're very sophisticated or they're less sophisticated because it's access to what's cutting edge in, in terms of technology development. And we encourage all of you to bring your ideas to the table on how we can leverage this mass program and really invigorate it from a community perspective. And then, of course, in, in closing, I just again want to highlight the importance of strategic partners. Partnerships very, very tight with the Navy, of course, and, and, and being a shared port um, and, and, the, and the partnerships that we have and able to use the uh, properties for commercial uh, operations with GAPS being over there, having access to that berth. It's very important that we continue to work together. Pleased to say that you know John is a vet, comes from the Navy, and, and he's working very nicely with the port operations folks. Um, at the base, and we have a really great relationship there, and they're coming to the table as we're talking about business development opportunities. So it's, it's really a great business environment and, and a partnership that we have now with the base. Community partners, team, you're all here. Your demonstration of how important that is, and we're really excited to hear from all of you as we get underway with the washboard sessions and, and, and the participation there, but clearly very, very important to what we're doing and to our, our harbor commissioners. And then events. We try and invite you in as much as we can. We have meetings like this, but we also have a great banana festival. Is everyone? <coughs> yeah, show me. Yeah, the North Banana Festival. Yeah, it's about this year we had 12,000 people come out to this event. So just again, it's a really good opportunity to have the community come in, get an authentic experience of what it's like to see a working port and have a little fun while we're doing it. So I encourage you all to bring your families out. It is really a really good event. And then with uh, Commissioner. Uh, for Mayor's year, we participated in an ILWU lemonade walk where the, the funds for, raised from that walk go to cancer patients. So that's a, another community event that we're pleased to participate in. So, uh, government partners, we have a lot of government partners in the room. They're very, very important to the success of the port at all levels. Port security partners, we've recently, I think, come up with about $13.1 million in grants. And what, what's, what's key about that is we can share those investments with the community, whether it's in fire trucks, helicopters, trains, planes, whatever it might be. But there's opportunities to improve our homes and land security because we have access to these port security grants. There's another one coming up, so we'll make sure we engage our community partners in that. And I think that's the overall show. So if there are questions on this, I'll be here, ask me, but we just wanted to kind of give a very high level pro presentation of some of the things that we're working on, our leadership uh, priorities, and, and very interested to see what you have to say about them. So thank you again for coming. Okay, we're, we're gonna move this along, and as everyone has the agenda, um, we're going to really stick that, stick to that tonight because we know everyone's time is very valuable. Um, a couple comments um, for those who haven't been in the building before. Uh, the restrooms down the corridor, um, sort of to the right of the couch, there's a doorway. And then the next sort of hallway to the right, uh, both facilities are located down there. Um, we have about five minutes. We're going to just sort of let people stretch before we get into sort of the, the brainstorming session. Grab another drink, a, a plate of cookies to keep your sugar level up for the next hour. And then safety is always a, a big concern, as, as Kristen mentioned it and as ACOM always mentions it. Um, you'll see the exit signs around, the doors you all entered, of course, the primary exit. But if there was a, an instance where we all had to evacuate uh, port staff, what's the, the secondary exits? The virus care? You just stepped out. <laughs> Good timing. Okay. Okay. Oh, no, no. There's access here outside the back, directly out the back, and then there's access this way. So we'll make sure we get you out of here. Okay. But it's directly out here to the exit. All right, so with that, let's take a five-minute break. Everyone come back to... Into the, uh, we got about an hour and ten minutes. And if, uh, if everyone can just sort of refocus their attention, we're, we're going to go over a couple things. First, we're going to go over the results of the first polling. Just to, to give uh, everyone sort of a feeling of the, the, the hand vote. And um, Brian, I don't know if, can you go ahead and maybe uh, 
Yeah, yeah run, run through it there for everybody. I'll do my best, uh, Vanna White. <laughs> All right, so uh, by far the, the leading category was trade development. I received about 28% of the response. Followed closely by the Navy Port City coordination uh, and uh, tied up with the Marine Terminal operations. So this came in about 14% of the response. Um, behind that is basically jobs creation, regional infrastructure development, and then just calling out some of the, the lower scoring categories. Fiscal responsibility, really, fiscal responsibility. Uh, energy initiatives and community engagement. So, there we go. All right. Now, at the end of, of this next session, we're going to do another vote. So everyone, keep in mind, you're going you're to have another vote tonight. And then we're going to do a comparison and see where we end up at the end of the night uh, against where we were at the beginning of the night. Um, a couple instructions. Everyone is needs to sort of focus around a table. Um, not that you have to be seated right at it, but if you could maybe pull some of the chairs up, because the conversation um, for the next 50 minutes, plus or minus, is going to focus around the five tables. And some of you most probably have noticed there's, there's five boards. Um, we're going to have sort of five moderators, um, one attached to each board. Uh, Donna, you're going to be handling Trade development. Oh, trade development. Great. Okay. So, right my table. Okay. so Don is going to handle trade development. Uh, Brian, you're going to handle regional infrastructure transportation. Okay. I'm going to circulate around on the environmental. Um, Lou DiMeglio is going to handle terminal facilities and operations. And Will, you're going to do public outreach and communication. And we're going to keep this real simple. Um, with the big turnout, what we're going to do is let you all stay at your seats and about every uh, 10 minutes, 8 to 10 minutes, we're going to circulate the, uh, the moderator with the, uh, the whiteboard to the next table so you all will have a chance to, to discuss uh, the relative board. A couple tools. Um, on, on your tables, there are notepads and if you don't have a notepad, raise your hand and we'll make sure you get a notepad and a pen. Anything that comes, we need a, a notepad and a pen over here. Um, if, if anything comes up during the night that's not being covered, um, just write your comments down on that notepad. You can fold it up. You can just place it up here. Um, put your name, your contact information if you would like. If it's just a general comment, just, you know, it could be anonymous. But, those, those are for anything that comes up that we're not covering that you feel should have been covered or is on your mind and, and you want to get it out into the discussion. Um, the second tool you have is you're going to see a series of cards which basically are what we have hanging here on the, on the podium. Um, if you look on the back, everyone can pick one that's close. There's some additional facts for you all, so if, except for that one that says um, Tell us what you think. So if you sort of have a question on your mind about what the topic sort of is, is intended to discuss or if you want to just do a brief read of the statistics or information related to it, it's right on the flip side. Feel free to, to reference those. Um, we may reference it as, as we try to moderate the, the five groups to, to bring some discussion. Um, the most important thing is we're not here to, to really do a lot of talking. Um, we're really here to listen tonight. And so if, if one of the five of us begin to, to sort of dominate the discussion, then we're not doing our job. So the discussion is about everyone seated at the, seated at the table, um, those in the back of each table. Just you know, feel free to just dialogue, you know, bump your neighbor. Hey, what do you think? Am I thinking the wrong thing? I mean, it's really just an interactive discussion among yourselves, and then you know we want to hear the comments that are, are sort of coming, percolating up from each of the groups, and then that's that's really the focus. Once we get through that process, and again, we'll we'll try to you know move it along because we know everyone's time is extremely valuable. Then we'll come back and we'll do a, a quick vote. Um, while we're doing that quick vote, we'll, we'll tally that up and we'll have some closing comments from Kristen and, and possibly one of the commissioners on, on the process tonight and we'll wrap it up and, and everyone can grab a, a cookie to go, uh, to go home with. So um, 
So with that, let's um, start the process. Um, all right, so this time we're going to make sure those hands are, we get one, one hug per person, and we're going to go down that list of 11 again, and if anyone wants to put a, a new item on the ballot for vote, let's, let's uh, hear that first. Is there anything in addition to the 11 topics that we voted on earlier tonight, um, some of which had an expansion of the definition to include city. <laughs> so if, if there's anything else, but if not, we'll proceed down that list of 11. Um, everybody, one vote per person. So let's start with trade development as far as the, the, the most uh, important um, item on your mind relative to the Port of Wine Gaming. Next item is security. I voted on that last time. <laughs> okay, all right, you're good. I think a lot of your peers love it now. <laughs> all right, uh, marine terminal operations. Job creation. You go, Kimberly. Thank you. <laughs> Green Court influences. Regional infrastructure development. Wow. Okay. Keep the, keep those hands up one more time. Brian, Luke, and Gimel. All right. Yeah. Fiscal responsibilities. This is the loser, the first one, by the way. Energy initiatives. <laughs> Community engagement. Come on, Cosmo. Okay. Oh, okay. Navy, city, port coordination cooperation. You better raise your hand. Come on. All right, and the last one was operating perimeters. <laughs> did, did everyone get a vote? Everyone voted, all right? Okay, so we are going to tally those up and then Brian's going to put side-by-side -side comparison just to see where we progressed from the beginning of the night to uh, now. So with that, Kristen, a few closing comments. You know, it's really amazing walking to the table and listening to all of your comments and uh, your engagement in this process. It's, it's really great. Um, I'm surprised at some of the hands that were raised for some of the things that, that, uh, that were brought up, the issues. And I remember uh, five years ago, I think the Godwins were there, and uh, Mr. Palomares was there at CLU when we went to a similar, similar exercise. Do you remember that? Sure. Yeah, and thank you for being here again today. I appreciate it. You know, I, I'm really surprised about the jobs issue. That uh, obviously trade development creates everything; it's a cascade effect. But I was surprised about the jobs thing because, you know, uh, you know, some of the studies that I read is that uh, like 59% of the people in the United States of America only have incomes of about 35%, whereas in the logistics industry, trade industry, that's 30 and 50% higher than that. So that goes up to 50 to 70 thousand dollars. And you would think that would be what we're looking at to create great consumers for our communities to bring up and raise up our entire communities and, and also support our, our working families. But in any event, uh, this has been a great experience for me. And as I said, walking around and listening to everybody, 
Uh, I think I was taking a tally here, and I think we need about $100 million to implement that. <laughs> <laughs> so, so we'll get together and we'll talk about how we're going to do that. But uh, thank you so much. I really appreciate this exercise. I really appreciate your time being here. I know it's, it's late. And thanks again. And now here's Chris. So we're going to put it all together. We're going to try and uh, see where there's threads, where there's themes, um, and, and how we can build that into our priorities as a strategic plan to make sure that the leadership here is aligning with the leadership in our, in our community. So um, stay tuned. We will let you know how this all pieces together. The next step is to probably have a kind of rollout draft plan sometime in March after we do a few board workshops here and digest all this information. And uh, we'll keep you engaged of, of the direction that we're going. So again, I know this this was a long night. Um, Y'all kept your energy up. We really do appreciate it. I, I thank my commissioners for being here and our leadership and support and all my staff and team for getting out there and picking your brains. And, and uh, I hope we, we really come up with a good plan as a result of this. So thank you very much. And <coughs> the results are in. Results all are right, in. here we go. All right. All right. All right. All right, we, we, we did have a shift, so it, it was a productive night. Um, while Brian's getting that up, um, we, we've done a lot of these with, with ports and, and, and port stakeholders. Um, we just really were amazed with the comments and the in-depth questioning, so it was a great session for, for us as well to be here with, with the port and the port staff and the port commissioners. So, um, Brian, on we have what? On the left? Is the original poll correct? The left is the original poll correct. All right, and Vanna on the right is what? <laughs> so, on the second poll, so basically we've seen a shift. So in the first poll, we saw that trade development was the number one issue. Uh, in the second poll, actually things have shifted over to Navy City Port Coordination. So uh, definitely a, a transformative experience. Uh, followed though now by regional infrastructure development, which was basically kind of a kind of a mid-range issue in the first poll. So. Clearly, there have been some shifts through the course of the night. Exactly what we're trying to get to the root of the, the actual issues that we can start to talk about. And is there, there still is trade development, correct? Uh, yep, and trade development is this uh, kind of cyan color. Okay, what's, what's the loser in the new pie diagram? Oh my gosh. Well, There's no losers in it. <laughs> it's the winner. It's the winner. Everyone's all the intersection. They are winners. All right, any closing comments from you all on the night? Um, again, any comments? Your point of contact is back there in the corner. Donna, um, you, you have her email. You, you know where to find her. I have cards for you back here on this table. As you walk out, please take one, and I'm happy to hear from all of you. Yeah, and, and again, it's, it's been a great night for the team, and uh, hopefully uh, we'll, we'll see everybody in about a month or five or six weeks and, and be uh, on our way to a draft. Thanks for being here.